The following is a message from the 2020 Mother of the Year, Lisa Pavich. I believe that around um, the end of February, beginning of March, our whole like consciousness and world is just going to open up and it's just going to be so much better for everybody. So what we've been through, we're going to get a reward, I feel like. I cannot hear you. Let me try again. Can you hear me now? I cannot hear you. Just back from the post office. I'm Schmitty, and this is Talking Schmidt. Today on the show, we got Matters Apps. Before we get started, though, see what I got in the mail. What, what? I always do this just in case. Ah, look at that little drawing. So cute. We got a couple shirts. Whoa. Look at this little keychain. Shout out to Filter. Shout out. Ooh. You know I love these Mark Gonzalez drawing stickers. Ah, yeah. Filter's in the house. Gonna look good in the binder. Got an extra one for the wall. Got a shirt. Might have to throw one of these on real quick. Hold up. Ba-boom. That almost looks like a Lottie graphic right there, huh? Hold on. All right. All right. All right. Let's do this. Uh, big shout out to Real Deal in Finland. I think it's Swami Finland. Sending me a couple of stickers. Super stoked. I'm so hyped on stickers. I'm like a little kid again. As you can see behind me, I've got a little collection going. And then just finished my fourth binder. All my stickers are in alphabetical order from A to Z. Three binders. Then I have a fourth binder where I have all my skate shop stickers. And at the end of that, I have the deluxe Mark Gonzalez you know, these guys right here, these guys right there. Shout out. That's been cool. I just like supporting the shops and I like collecting. I'm a fucking baseball card collector from the 80s living in the 2020s here for skateboard stickers. It's all transferred over to my brain. Hashtag, are you okay? And I blame my mom, the antique collector, for all of it. Last week, we had a winner. Jasmine Ose. <laughs> Finally won, Jasmine. Shout out. Shout out. And uh, shout out to Danner Tanner and his daughter, Luna Rose Garcia. That's Luna Rose Garcia. La Luna. Oh, mama. Mm, you were so close. You came in second. But I uh, wanted to give you a shout out. And Luna, I love that you listen. I, I really do. So appreciate that. Send me your address and I'll send you out some stickers as a consolation prize. How about that? Also to Dan Jones for being the first ever to buy the Talking Schmidt Shrunken Head Collab Beanie. Really appreciate all the support Dan's given me through the last two years of this podcast and uh, want to give him a shout for sure. Uh, this week's giveaway... Check this out, kids. The classic Thrasher video from Preston Mygetter, Beer Helmet, brand new on DVD, never even opened, sealed, brand new. You know there's Rip Riding from Chet Childress, Peter Hewitt, Lance Mountain, Steve Bailey, Diego Puccieri, Tony Trujillo, Cardiel Navarrete, Drahobo Hits, and many more. Is that is that real? And you know there's going to be a lot of... Tsk, tsk, tsk. Oh, big dog's in. Got it. I got a hat from Alien Workshop we're going to toss in there because this hat, I appreciate it, but it will not fit this dome. So I'm giving it out to this week's winner who emails me at talkingschmidt at gmail.com we're going to try to do a little giveaway every week so you got the email talking schmidt at gmail.com 
And this week, the question is, which skate shop sticker? No, because the audio people won't be able to play. Hold on. Let me get a good one. Let me get a good one. All right. Ready? The question is, what country is Matters Apps from? What country is Matters Apps from? Talkingschmidt at gmail.com for a alien workshop hat and a beer helmet DVD. All right, all right, all right, all right. Freestyle, ready? Yesterday sucked. It was two years to the day that the Felper died. I knew it was coming. I woke up, went to get a coffee, hit me like a ton of bricks. And I'm just got to say that, uh, I don't know, it was difficult. And I wanted to share that with you guys because uh, sometimes it's good to just share what's on your mind, you know. And since I don't feel up to it, I'm not going to do it. Death, I did. That's what you said. Death, I did. Born to the head. Death, I did. The shoes are turning red. Death, I did. Lying in your bed. Death. Die. Dead. One more to the head. Death, I did. That's what you said. Death, I did. Born to the head. Death, I did. So this week is Matters Apps, and here he is. Sveiki, šeit runā Matters Apse, un jūs klausāties Talking Schmidt. It's cool, like tonight is the night. Here we go again. Just give it the old cars turn, isn't it? All big dogs in. Schmitty. 96 times, Schmitty. Thanks, Schmitty. We on? Schmitty. Talking Schmidt. That's called going to the hospital, bitch. I be <laughs> shit my pants. Man. Hey, Rolodex is fucking deep. It's right. about the one. The one. The one. Who is this guy? He thinks he's tough shit. What's up? We're tastemakers. Come on, Schmitty. What the fuck? Let's hear it for Greg Smith. Yeah! I hear you now. You can hear me? Yeah. Oh, shit. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. How you doing? Good, good. I'm just chilling. Where you at? In Portugal. Portugal? Lisbon? No. Aveiro. It's a small town between Lisbon and Porto. You on a skate trip or? No. I'm kind of living here these days. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Just How's a little that? bit. Good? Yeah, amazing. You know that uh, I'm Portuguese. Really? Yeah, my grandpa was uh, 100%. Mm -hmm. His last name was Silva. And how did it become Smith? Well, my mom got married. And okay. my dad's last name was Smith. He's there from like Scotland or England oh, or something. Your mom. Yeah. yeah. So oh, how are you? Those Where are, are paisanos. Have you been skating at all? Or are you keeping it pretty low key? Well, I've been skating. I got back from Brazil two days ago. Oh shit! How was that? Amazing. I went to visit Felipe Nunes, the guy nice. without legs. What uh is that uh that's not Rio, right? Sao Paulo? Curitiba, which is south of Sao Paulo, so South Brazil. Mm -hmm. The spots are like harder to skate there, right? Yeah, well, we mostly skated skate parks, just like I did bomb some hills and we did skate one rail with Felipe back to back. But yeah, there's like actually Curitiba is the city where Carlos de Andrade, uh, Yuri Fashini, Alex Carolino, Danny Serzini. Oh, the damn. Skaters, they're from there. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I got to meet Carlos last week. Oh, you never met him? 
No, I was just seeing him in videos and magazines, and I was just like, damn, I'm a big fan. And he said, yeah, I'm a big fan of you. And I'm like, I was surprised. He's so good, right? Yeah. Then he still skates every day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Fuck. Still got uh, those downside flips over to coping and not like 360s and all that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ooh. So how long were you there? For five, five days, like a week, pretty oh. much. How far is that from where you are? 20 hours. Oh, so it's kind of like from here too. I took like three flights. Yeah. 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 From here, it takes about, I think, 18 to 20 hours. Yeah. <laughs> what do you do on those long flights? Can you sleep or do you bring like fucking digital shit to entertain you? You read or what? It's different every time, but. Yeah, sometimes I just go through uh, four movies. Sometimes I don't do any movies, just straight sleep. Sometimes I get an audio book. Sometimes a real book, which not as often. And then skate videos, definitely watch some skate videos. And I yeah, try to get up, stand around, walk around a little bit. And, uh-huh. I don't know. You bring snacks? You a snacker? <sighs> Oh, I'm trying to avoid, I'm trying to avoid snacks because every time I go on planes and traveling, then it's like no vegetables, no salad. It's just pasta, potatoes, chicken, (laughs) bread. So in between flights, it's also coffee and bread, (laughs) you know. Totally. I'm learning, I'm learning. Uh Uh-huh. What happened to draw you to skateboarding? Like, what was it that got you to get your first skateboard? Well, there was a skate park right next to my house. So I tried rollerblading at first, then started skating. Then I tried BMX and then went back to skating. But what drew, drew me to it, I guess it's just trying to be cool. <laughs> you know, I've seen it in some cartoons. I used to play that Tony Hawk game all the time. And I don't know, I think I keep telling people that I just wanted to be cool. But I'm not sure if that is true. Probably. So what year was that? 2001 2001 so skateboarding was already pretty cool and so you were like oh i want to do that like to be cool and what was the first board did you go to a skate shop uh no i bought it in like a sports store sports goods shop but the money that i bought it with i earned by selling flowers on the market so that's the only kind of work that i ever did was go in the fields pick some flowers make like those things that they put around the head, you know, and then I made like 20 bucks, $25. And with that money, I bought a skateboard with flames all over it. Yeah. You grew up in Latvia, right? Mm-hmm. On the West side next to the beach. Was, so is skateboarding pretty popular there? There was a first generation was like seventies, eighties. There were some skaters mm. Then the later nineties, then came the second generation. And then I kind of entered when the second generation was already fading. So I came with the third generation, you might say. What's the language? Latvian. That, that's the, okay. Can you say, um, hello, this is Matters Apps and you're listening to Talkin Schmidt in Latvian? Yeah. Sveiki, šeit runā Matters Apse. On yours, Klaus Atis, talking Schmidt. <laughs> yes. You just influenced somebody. How fucking cool. So, do you remember what the first like real skateboard was? Like, a, I don't know if it was an American, like if you got a element or a pal or something like that. Have you heard of Killer Loop? Killer Loop, yeah. Have you heard of that? <laughs> That was my second board, Killer uh, Loop. It's still not a real skateboard, but it's way better than the one that I had. Okay. Was there a skate shop or was this from a sport shop? Killer Loop was already from a skate shop. And then after Killer Loop, I guess I already got sponsored. Really? Kind of. I think I got like a, I got some skateboards after that. I got a, maybe... I got another Killer Loop as, as a sponsored skateboarder. <laughs> and this K- is like your first year of skateboarding? Well, 2001, I started in August. In 2002, May, I already won my first contest, which wow. was like until 16 years of age in my hometown. There was like a youth Olympics. So I won that. 
Some people got the word, went to Riga, the capital, and told some guys from the skate shop there about me. <clears throat> so then pretty soon after that, I got on that skate shop and they would give me random brands. But they start, at first they would give me Killer Loop and then I would get like some real brands from Cali. Uh -huh. And then one year later in like 2003, that's when I changed shop sponsors. I got a different skate shop sponsor and started skating for Element. Whoa, slow it down. In that contest you won, what was like some of the best thing you did? Fakie tail stall on the biggest transition, pushing oh, mama. pushing switch. Like I was a Mongo skater, so I go all the way from the other side of the skate park to the other side and do a fakie tail stall and then go down, do like a rock to fake you on something else. And then early, early indie grabs over like volcanoes. and No, no flip tricks? Oh, definitely not. Oh, I okay. Flip tricks like a year later. Okay. I wanted to do a perfect contest run and flip tricks is risky. <laughs> Stay on. <laughs> so I basically just did a run with a bunch of early grab indies and going over the whole skate park and Nobody else was doing that in my age group because everybody else was like standing in one location going forth and back. I would just go over everything. Mm. In yeah. that time, did you already like look at the skateboard magazines and videos or not yet? At that time, no, no skateboard, no skate videos, no magazines. Well, perhaps I got some. My, my stepdad would go to Belgium to buy cars and then go bring them back to Latvia and sell. And on the way, he would buy Transworld Skateboarding or Skateboard Mag or the German magazines, and then he would bring them back to me, and that's how I would see skateboarding. And also, on this European sports channel, once a week, they had this show at nighttime in the middle of the night, and I would watch that show, record it on a VHS tape, and then watch it over and over again. And then the next couple of years, it was like the only thing that I would want to win in a contest would be a VHS tape. <laughs> the thing that was the most prized for me, you know. What were some of like the early videos that you were watching in heavy rotation? Like who was on your, if you took a photo and put it on your wall, like who was your, damn, that's the guy or whatever. Well, I had, this is skateboarding. I had Habitat Mosaic. Mm. I had a couple of 411s. I had a couple on videos. Cliché, Bon Appetit. You were into Mark Appleyard or uh, oh, yeah. Fred, Fred Gall, yeah. Stefan. Yeah, Stefan, definitely. And uh, Freddie, for sure. Jason Adams in some 411 video was a good memory. And ah. some world videos, but, but that's already when I got a computer. So then I kind of got the Dark Star video. That was sick. Fuck. So it was hard to come by skate videos, for sure. Who is your... First sponsor, probably the local shop. Yeah, it was a shop from Riga. Uh huh. And, and I changed to another shop in Riga. And, but the first shop would not give me like certain brands. It would give me like whatever's in the shop. But the okay. second shop was Element Skateboards, Destructo Trucks, huh. and S Shoes. Damn. So you've been, you've been doing Element for a minute. Oh, yeah. It's definitely like, 17 years now or something like that. 18. Oh, shit. Yeah. And when was your first trip to U.S.? That was when I moved to Barcelona in 2008. Then I was there with my friend from fin fin Finland. Well, he's Arizona, Travis Adams. And his good friend was Levi Brown. Mm. And then Levi came to Barcelona in, I guess, maybe 2009 it was. And then he said, yeah, come to the U.S. You can stay at my place. And... So 2009 was the first time I think that I went. And where'd you go? LA? Long Beach. Long Beach. Yeah, definitely Long Beach. I've been going to Long Beach for 10 years straight every year. I haven't missed a year. No way. Yeah. That rules. What Ever was your, was your head blown? Like what, like what was like, was it more than what you expected or less than what you expected or what? Well, it was definitely a culture shock because I was kind of living in Barcelona and there was like all these people in Barcelona on the streets. And then I went to Cali and it was kind of kind of more low key on the streets. Uh huh. But I don't know. I, I loved it. You know, I liked it. Mm -hmm. I loved 
American breakfast. I loved all the skate spots, all the filmers, like Ricky, the dude, he straight away told me he wants to film a video part with me. And I was just like, oh, my God, <laughs> I can't believe that. You know what I mean? You knew who he was already? Yeah, yeah he was the element filmer. And now another first impression with Ricky, the dude, Bedenbaugh. My first impressions of Matters was on an element trip in 2010. Uh, I think we were in Arizona. Honestly, the best way to get to know somebody is by traveling with them or touring with them, uh, because by the end of the trip, you're either gonna love them or hate them. Uh, by the end of that trip, everybody loved Matters. He brought so much energy to that trip and just killed it. Like, skated things differently, looked at things differently. He fucking speaks like nine languages. He's a rad dude, I, I love seeing him skate. He fucking firecracker El Toro. I mean, that goes to show you what type of person he is and how he looks at things. Like most people go there and think, you know, I'm gonna skate the rail or I'm gonna jump down the stairs. Uh, he was like, ah, I'm gonna firecracker the stairs. And um, I don't know, man. It was always rad to film with that dude. I wish I could film with him more. Keep doing you matters. You fucking kill it. Love you, brother. And he was the first filmer that I would film with and in California, it was just me and Ricky in the car. We went to El Toro and like all these spots. Cool. Yeah, were you kind of like, I know a lot of my friends that come from other countries, like when Diego uh, came from Argentina, like w we were basically going around almost like tourists, but in a skateboard m mindset, like I got to see Hubba, I got to see Embarcadero, I got to see this, like. Is that kind of what you, you were like? You were like, I need to see the triple set in Venice or like whatever, like going to the spots you had seen? Yeah, I got to go to a house party at the Darrell Stanton's house. <laughs> that was insane. <laughs> I got to see all these skate spots, Kate Perry and like see Chad Tim Tim and like see Danny Garcia and... I don't know, like just go down, like we went to LA and Stefan Janoski is just sitting in a cafeteria there. Here comes the nice. So I was like, oh my God. He's but, like one of you, he was one of your favorites growing up. Yeah, most definitely. His mosaic part kind of blew my mind. And then, then after that, it was the sub subtleties, Transworld subtleties. And that video too was pretty sick. Yeah. But yeah, I had a lot of favorite skaters, you know, like I appreciate all sorts of skating. Mm -hmm. Did you come to SF early on or not till later? I think it was a little bit later. Yeah. I feel like I still need to go to SF because I still need to skate some more SF spots. Mm -hmm. Like I skated with Dave, Dave Kami a little bit, shot some photos. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did like some classic SF spots, but not as much, but mostly stay around long beach and then somehow made it down to san diego and that's where i would stay with wes and wes was the homie mm -hmm. told me the in and out you know took me straight to in and out <laughs> yeah. everybody loves their in and out what's your you get you get uh what do you get when you go there i get animal style for sure <laughs> yeah animal style fries <laughs> and the burger with a grilled onion nice What's uh, one of the better trips you've taken with Wes? You guys have had a lot of uh, travel together with DC and stuff, right? Yeah, DC. And also some Red Bull missions, which is like Wes just came as a guest, you know? Oh, sick. Traveling together is nice. And um, yeah, all those trips are memorable, but I guess Southeast Asia was nice. Going to all these Jakarta and... Bangkok, staying in Hong Kong with Wes when <clears throat> there was like a typhoon, so we couldn't leave the country. So we had to stay in a hotel for a couple of days. So we were just chilling in Hong Kong. That was a good time. Huh. But then we also came to Latvia. That was a great experience. He, he came with all the skate mafia guys and sick. Pretty much party every day and skate. And is uh, Surrey out there still? I think he might be in Barcelona. Yeah, he's like a he, learning he, Spanish. He, he moved there, I think, right? Mm -hmm, like five, six years ago. Okay. Uh, when you guys go on those Red Bull trips, is there lots of Jaeger bombs going on? Do you guys get into that? 
one DC trip, we had some Jaeger bombs and I had to blow up after, but <laughs> on the Red Bull trips, yeah, sometimes when, uh, when like I go to this contest, simple session in Estonia and there to get it, get into the after party, they always get us a VIP lounge with vodka Red Bulls and I'm just like, uh, just give me the vodka. <laughs> yep. What's your go-to drink? Whiskey and beer. Whiskey and beer. Or water, of course. <laughs> water <laughs> when I'm not partying, but when I'm partying, then it's... No, but if you go to the bar, what do you order? I'll get a beer and then a whiskey and then another beer. Okay. A little sidecar. Pew, pew. <laughs> Do we used to start the night out with a Jaeger bomb? Like every, every time we go to the bar was like Jaeger bombs for the crew. Psh, all right, let's go. Hasta la vista, baby. Yeah, that's what Jimmy did, did, gave me once on a DC trip in like New Zealand. And, and I, I believe I threw up after like 40 minutes. <laughs> yeah, it's not easy on your stomach for sure. So what was it like when you turn pro how did that all go down was it a surprise was it like in the works you saw it coming it was not a surprise because cole the team manager he asked me if it's if i want to know if i want to be a surprise and i was like yeah i want to know because you already told me (laughs) (laughs) so yeah it was not a surprise and i had two pro parties i had one in california and one in latvia so double trouble Sick. Did they all come out to Latvia for it? The Element Europe team did. Oh, sick. In the U.S., it was the U.S. team and all the Long Beach locals and even Antoine Dixon came out. <laughs> no way. Did it get wild? I don't know. I can't remember much. <laughs> it was, yeah. There was just so much commotion and I don't know. So many drinks. Uh-huh. Are you the first pro in Latvia? Yeah. Pro skateboard? Hmm. Like when you walk down the street, do people recognize you or is skateboarding that big where people are like, oh, there's matters? Yeah, I would say yes, because I make it a point to appear on Latvian TV every now and then and Latvian news publishings and like newspapers and journals. Right. Because for me, it's important to try to promote (laughs) Red Bull. (laughs) <laughs> so every time I try to go on TV because the people in the Red Bull Latvia office, they need to reach these like numbers, like these many views, like Red Bull logo appearing there and there. Yeah, That's how awesome. I get to stay on the team. And so I try to, I went to a cooking show like a couple months ago. No way. So it was four episodes. There were four contestants and I go to their house and I judge their food and they come to my house and judge my food. What did you cook? I cooked some fish with potatoes and onions, my hometown style. My mom and my stepdad, they definitely helped me, but it was kind of fish. I don't know the English word, but it's saltwater fish from the sea. Okay. Not really salmon. It's like a traditional dish in in Latvia? In my hometown, yeah, kind of. Okay. Damn. Is that on like uh, YouTube or anything? Uh, not, not on YouTube, but it's on the internet. Damn, cooking with matters. I'm trying to find the, the, the translation now. Of the fish. And it is called cod. I'm sorry. Oh, cod, okay. Codfish with onions and potatoes, but it's first the fish, you cook it on a pan with, with some breading around it, like egg and flour, and then... You put all that fish in on the bottom thing on the, the stuff that you put in the oven, like a big like thing. Mm-hmm. Then uh, tons of cooked onions with cream on top, and then you let it settle in, and then it's just. And then you eat that with potatoes. It's delicious. Nice. That sounds good. Fish is one of my favorite protein. So true or false, you got a bunch of money from your hometown for having the uh, town's name on one of your graphics. True. <laughs> How did you hook that up? Uh, should I turn on the light? Is it getting dark? A little. There goes the light. <laughs> Disco ball. Basically, it was my stepdad's idea, I guess, because yeah, we could do some promo for my hometown, and then and then Cole from Element, he said, "Oh my God, 
they're going to give you money for putting men's school's logo on the board. All right. Easy. <laughs> so we did it. Then I got like a grand or two, like something well, like that. Yeah. Every fucking penny helps. They actually promised me more and ended up giving me a little bit less, but it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, 2012, you got the ESOTY, yeah, European Skateboarder of the Year from what, Kingpin, right? Yeah. Actually, I got it two times. I don't remember the exact years, but yeah, I got it twice. One time it was for Future Nature video part. Uh huh. And the second time was for DC, where EU at? I, th I think it's from that. And how, how does that all go down? Is it similar to how Thrasher does it? Do you have a big party and stuff and everyone gets together and celebrate or? Yeah, it happens during the Bright Trade Show in Berlin. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, it's like a party for sure. But both of those times I was kind of away. Or one of the time I was in New Zealand for that DC trip. And the other time, yeah, I went there and partied and it was a party for sure. Like people vote from the industry in Europe, like a bunch of people, like filmers, photographers, like magazine editors and stuff. And then there's a public voting too. Mm -hmm. And then I'll choose it. Were you uh, here for Wes's Skater of the Year? No. No. Okay. I, I yeah. went to tour though. Huh? I went to the trip. Oh, yeah. On the Sodi trip, right? Oh, yeah, shit. You, you were on that one with P-Stone and Jake? Oh, yeah, I was on that trip. And then during that trip, I actually got the European Skater of the Year. So I had to go to Berlin <laughs> for two days and then flew back to the Sodi trip. Where did you guys go? Canary Island? No. Yeah. Canary Island. Yeah. I, dude, talk about that trip a little bit. That looked insane. Yeah, it was nice. It was nice. It was Definitely. Jo Joe Brook was photographer, right? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, Joe told me that Wes got the cover pretty much like the last day on the way to the airport almost. <laughs> yeah, that circle thing. Yeah, so that big orange, ops whatever. <clears throat> yeah, well, that trip was fun. We, we, we had a big tour bus and we would go from city to city. And uh, yeah, Phelps was crazy, I guess, as usual. Sleep was that was your first trip with Jake? Yeah, with Jake and P-Stone as well. Were you yeah. like nervous or intimidated like by their like... Of course. Yeah. Of course. Phelps just comes up to me and just straight punches me in the chest. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. <clears throat> and then actually the first night, the most memorable for me was the first night, me, Marius, Phelps, and P-Stone. Just the four of us were like, fuck it, after dinner, we're not going back to the hotel. We went down to Hooker Alley and was heck, hanging out at the bar there and just partying a little bit. Ah, uh, see. And then it started raining, I had to go home, but it was still fun to like just hang out with those legends, as one might say, you know, of course. T Puds was there too, right? T Puds was there sleeping on the bench. <laughs> And then, yeah, you could, we would play Yahtzee, play, playing dice all the time. And uh -huh. in the hotel, middle of the night, you hear Phelps' screams, just like, <laughs> did anybody say spots? <laughs> so, yeah. We spots it a little bit. And yeah, Wes's homie, Roast Beef was there. T-Funk was there. Jimmy was there. Jimmy Asselford and my friend Joseph from Sweden. Uh-huh. And yeah, it was just celebration, pretty much. Celebrating the skater of the year. It was so fun. Rad. I was filming with my GoPro. So I was trying to film a little bit of Phelps. And he was just like, oh, <laughs> don't you. He's just giving me the eyes and like snatches the GoPro at my hand. Like wants to throw it out the window. He's like, don't you film because you got to look with the eyes, you know. Because you, you got to witness there. You got to be there. Because when you film, you don't really see what's going on. But, uh -huh. So that was one uh, big lesson that I learned. That huh. You have to film everything. You have to be in the moment and enjoy the moment. And, uh -huh. and then P-Stone is hanging around a tree with, with a beer and filming with a, with a camera, long lens angles. 
Yeah, I remember seeing, I think Jimmy had footage, like he's filming like some shit, like how you normally would. And then he just turns around and zooms way away. And Preston's like up in a tree or something. It's like his ego is insane. And every night Beast on would just be like sitting on the sofa with the beer and just. <laughs> and then the beer would just go start <laughs> on the floor while we were all playing Yahtzee. Oh, yeah. I, I got so many times where he would be sleeping on his back with the beer like like this. He's just asleep and the beer yeah. is like right there. I had the same thing. And then thing. you come and you try to grab the beer and he wait. Nope. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Yeah, good vibes for sure. Yeah, I miss those fuckers so much. Uh, talk about YouTube, though. You've been filming and doing your own thing for a minute, right? Yeah, because when I got that European Skate of the Year, well, I was on a DC trip in New Zealand. Some guys in the Brad Trade Show, they saw my like thank you video because I filmed like a thank you video and then I bombed the hill and uh -huh. I ate at the bottom of the hill. And then those guys were like, oh, this is the guy we're looking for because they're starting a YouTube channel with a BMXer, surfer, snowboarder and a skateboarder. Hmm. So chose me as a skateboarder and they had a budget for it. And I was like, I don't know. I really don't want to do it, but they're paying me money. So fuck it. Why not just go ahead and do it? So that's how it's a mad world came about. So, okay. And that was, was, was that like a regular, like every month or was it just whenever you had enough footage or what? No, no, we had a whole, I think probably a contract and everything. And we started filming six months before the stuff came out. So we had every two weeks. So 24 episodes in the first year and then wow, 12 episodes next year. So that was already like 36 episodes and then six episodes the year after that, because it kind of started shrinking because in the end that YouTube channel kind of faded away because the production company folks started focusing towards soccer, like football. So no oh. more skating and, and we couldn't get rights to the channel. We couldn't get the YouTube channel, which had already had 350,000 subscribers. So we couldn't continue it. And those guys left the production company, the producers. So then I had a break for like a year or two year break. And then after that, and then uh, Red Bull basically approached me to do a, another YouTube show for Red Bull TV. So now you're doing it for Red Bull. It's called Skate Tales. Okay, but it's not a continuation. It sort of is because the guys that invited me to do Skate Tales, like the filmer Danny Milan and Gaston Francisco, he's the photographer that does the production. And Danny went to Gaston and he said, yeah, I think I know a better way to do this Matters show than he used, than what it used to be but with the Mad World. Uh huh. So he had, the filmer had an idea to make it better. And, and now it's happening. I just got back from Brazil filming the second season. Oh, cool. Yeah. What have you learned through the whole process? Like YouTube's an interesting thing. I've been kind of just starting to put the podcast that I've been doing people or like you should put them up on the because I was doing audio only. And then now I, since we do them on Zoom, I can just throw it on YouTube. But it seems like I get way more attention through the audio ones. I haven't figured out how to like, is there tips you have or anything? No, um, I have a YouTube channel. It has 3000 subscribers and I'm trying to upload like every week or something. But yeah. Tips. Where do you upload the audio? It's not on YouTube, right? I have a podcast um, host and then it sends it to everything like Spotify, Apple, iTunes, all this stuff. And yeah. then I'll just put the video into YouTube. But the thing that sucks about YouTube is you have to have the rights for all the music. So what I've been doing is just putting the good version on the audio because they've been letting me do that and then just stripping the music. So I don't know. It's not as good of an experience. I don't think, but like you can put some footage on top of this, you know? Yeah. Like footage. skating, huh? Yeah. Right. But I'm not the best guy to give you advice on YouTube videos. I could just give you the most generic, generic, like, answers and right like you, you have to engage with the audience and you have to you know this stuff way better than me 
Yeah, I mean, in, in Instagram and Twitter and Facebook, like those ones, I think like I got into them when it started. So it was like I grew with it growing. It made more sense. But to get into YouTube in 2020 is kind of like <laughs> It's like Jake getting into Instagram for the last year of his life. He was like so late to the game and like so excited, like every day, like, ah, and I was like, dude, where have you been for like 10 years? You know, offline, seeing, witnessing it with the eyes. Yeah. But yeah. I guess you could use other platforms to put your YouTube videos out and. Yeah. And embedded and stuff, huh? Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. I'm I'm kind of like stoked a little bit more on just like driving and listening because usually it's like, I don't know, an hour conversation. And like, I just don't really see sitting in front of a TV watching it. But uh, some of them I spice up and make it like super cool. But that takes a lot of time, too. And I'm trying to put them out each week. So mm, that's what matters, putting them out constantly. Yeah, I think so. Like people are just stoked. Like, okay, there's another one. Oh, oh, oh. Like it's always something that's reliable and you're looking at, you know, for. So I got to get to San Diego and get Wes. For sure, for sure. Talk a little bit about the King of the Road. Oh, King of the Road. That's I guess that was the second trip that Phelps was on there that I've been with Phelps. He definitely punched me in, just in the chest on King of the Road too. <laughs> At the midway point at Zerosha's? No, that was at the very end. Oh, the, okay. When they announced the winner, that's when he punched me in the chest. He was like, yo, <laughs> don't you, don't you go, don't you forget. <laughs> <laughs> in case you forget. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was definitely, like Burnett said, like, on one trip we did more than most of the people do in their lives or don't even do in their lives, like. Every day it was just running, running, running. And, and yeah, for me, it was super fun, super easy. Like I didn't, I didn't force myself. I didn't like oh. put any pressure, like, because I was trying to go for Evan to get the MVP, you know, because uh -huh. we need those MVP points. So I was just like, yo, Evan, yeah. you do the trick because you need to be MVP. So <laughs> let and, Evan. And he did get the most valuable player from all the teams, you know. So he did get the most points. And he won. did the Nolly Trey flip onto the handrail. That was the first king of the road. I went on the second one. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's fucked up. What what went down on the second one? I'm, I, I guess I got them mixed up. On the second one, the most memorable moment was when uh, Evan ate a piece of poop. <laughs> Hashtag, are you okay? <laughs> and just pissing in his mouth. Oh, he drank like four different people's piss. Oh, man. He drank Nigel's piss just to warm up <laughs> on the first day. When we had the biggest pole jam ever, like kicker to pole jam. Oh, yeah. That, and that was day one, right? That was the start. That was day one. Sick. Yeah, we went to Zerosha's. That was amazing. Did you ride one of the dirt boards? Oh, for sure. How'd you like it? It's fun. It's fun to ride dirt boards. Yeah. It's a little yeah. sketchy though, huh? It's like kind of like weird. Like it kind of drifts. It's like in between snowboarding and skateboarding. A little bit. Yeah. Except for when you fall, it's a lot more. Painful. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. I ate shit on. There was a hose going across it and I didn't see it. And I fucking hit it and just went, wow. <laughs> Yeah, that was a fun one at Zerosha's with all the crazy, like the the big hill where they were flying down it and whatever. Good times, good times. What's the impression of U.S. from out there? Like, what are people thinking? Is it? Uh, yeah, well, I think it's like a reality show. For me, it's interesting. You know, I was just in Brazil and we we're just all looking at the news, seeing what's going on in the capital and seeing about Trump's announcement that now everybody should go in like... <laughs> invade their own cities and yeah it's pretty wild like i was there i was in california in march april may and in june i came back to europe so i was there in the beginning of the coronavirus okay so i got to skate the streets with my friend dave go out in the streets and go to san diego skate with wes and mm. it was pretty mellow like i didn't see nothing crazy around i was just 
yeah, skating and I don't mind that the bar was closed. Of course, that's like a big issue for a lot of people, but I was just like, all right, the bar is closed. That means I can go to sleep early, wake up early and go skate. Yeah. Do some little yoga meditation in the morning and then, yeah, go skate. You do a lot of yoga? I try. I try to do some stretching. Helps, huh? Yeah. I've been starting to get into it. Yeah, stretching is mandatory. It's, yeah. So many injuries, skating. Like right now I have a toe injury and that's the same toe that I hurt first time when I got invited on King of the Road and I couldn't go because of this stupid toe injury. Uh, yeah. So yoga and stretching and keeping the back straight. Like I have a back issue. So I try to like stretch my back every day a little bit, do the move the pelvis around, you know? Yeah. I want to skate. Like I don't care about anything else. I just want to skate. Rad. It's a big plan. What's uh what's going on with Element right now? Um, no more Evan. Cole left as TM to come to Thrasher. He wanted to team up with me, I guess. And uh fucking Mason left and get skater of the year. Did you feel a little bit deserted or <laughs> of course? Yeah. Of course. It- but Nick Garcia stayed and Nigel stayed and Westgate is still on. And oh, yeah. yeah. There's Apple Yard is there. But yeah, most of the homies, I feel like, left. So we're trying to work on a new team now, perhaps. But Are you guys going to work on a video? Yeah. In uh, 2022, is going to be 30 years for Element. So oh, shit. Of- okay. okay. Blast out then. Uh, who's the TM now? I think it's Andrew. Andrew Naguyan. Okay. Sorry for the pronunciation, Andrew. <laughs> How does it work for you? Do they send all your shit to Europe or do you have to? Oh, there's send- an element to Europe team too. Oh, so they have stuff in Europe. Yeah. And in Europe, it's Yako Yanen. Well, I Man. guess it's element is element. Like, so Yako is still there. and Yako is gnarly. Yeah. Then there's Michael Macrod. He's like an OG skater. He's still there. Like the first first guy to be on the element europe team and still on and uh-huh and you know there's this guy phil zvezen phil zvezen he's from uh belgium and he just turned to be team manager so he's going to be the team manager so he's going to oh. send me rocks and things are good and dc's got your back they've sent you out shoes and whatnot yeah dc dc jimmy's still running it down there they got a europe office and everything is still cool and the team is pretty much the same and pretty solid. You guys have been all together for a while, right? You, Evan, Wes. Yeah. So uh, many trips together. Is CJ there still? No. Yeah. CJ is one of the first guys, re- most recent guys that is not on. Like T Funk and CJ are, oh. are not on anymore. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Okay. But you get to go on lots of trips with those guys, right? Not in the past year. Hopefully this year we get more more traveling done. You ever meet Danny Way? Oh yeah. First time I met Danny Way, I was a little bit starstruck and didn't even like go up to him or whatever. Uh-huh. I guess he wanted to personally congratulate me on this DC part when it came out like 2009, 2010. Right. And I was just like, I showed up late to the event and, and then we were just like, yo, you're here. All right, let's go in. And I didn't even get to say hello, but I definitely hung out with Danny Way when I, we went to Dime Glory Challenge. That oh, was awesome. sick. Yeah. Danny is top five skaters of all time for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It was with Tony Hawk and with Danny Way that I was just like, all right, <laughs> this is above my level. Like, don't bother with me. Just do your thing. Like, let me be on the side and watch you. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever skated vert? Are you? Do you have vert skills? Yeah, we got a vert ramp in my hometown in Ventspils in Latvia. Uh, oh. I got some. Uh, and actually, when I was in California during the coronavirus, I ordered some pads. Is it four, five, six pads, or what's the company? One eight seven. <laughs> so I ordered some pads from them and they arrived like the same time that I my flight left California. So I didn't get to get those pads, but what's your best vert move? 
My best vert move. <clears throat> uh, shit, not so good. Frontside air. Yeah, that's kind of whatever. Probably just basics. I could just do like some front rock, like frontside five zero. Like oh, okay. I've done a backsmith on a vert, but I want to learn. I really want to learn. I really yeah. want to learn to do inverts. Like that's my big goal. Uh huh. Just frontside inverts. Frontside. Yeah, I've done them on like below vert level, like a small vert. I've done oh. it like that. Okay, well, that's yeah, what like, we want to see. Let's get one of those yeah. twenty twenty one goals. That's actually how I hurt my toe. That I that hurts right now. <laughs> oh really? Do a frontside invert. I was Hit doing it on the coping. No, I just went straight to flat. Oh fuck. Yeah, yeah. That's a fucking scary trick. For me, it's easier to do it to fakie. Really? But then it's like a Miller flip, but I'm like kind of like doing it. Like oh, yeah. Flip. All the way around. Yeah. Yeah. OK, because the uh, what do they call it? The fall guy, you go front side invert and then you bring it back to fakie, not all the way around. That one's gnarly. Not too many people do that one. Yeah. What's uh, going on for you for do you have anything planned or like what's COVID like in Europe? Well, in Portugal, I guess it's lockdown number two. Oh, you so, are in lockdown. Yeah, kind of locked down, but I can still go to the skate park and skate with the homies. <laughs> uh-huh. Do a little bit of streets. Everybody's got to wear a mask on the streets. And I guess Same here. most businesses should be closed now, but they're kind of open, at least for takeaway. And if you want to buy stuff, you don't go in the shop, but they like serve you from the door. <laughs> I know, oh. just try to do anything in order to not close the businesses because, you know, if you shut down the businesses, then there's no money, you know, people don't have no income. Right. So, I don't know, it's 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 active. Like, I don't know the numbers very well, but it's there, it's happening. Yeah. Just keep doing, like, I've been traveling more than anyone else these days, I guess. I went to Dubai like a month ago, just got back from Brazil, then I've been going to Lithuania. And what's flying like? Everybody wear masks? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Everybody got to wear masks. Do they sit next to each other or do they space you out or what? I guess they space you out unless you're like family, then you sit next to each other. But no, nah, like actually I've been sitting next to people that I don't know. and It's like now nobody has to sit in the middle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> window aisle, window aisle. Mm-hmm. That'd be tight. Whatever people decide, that's how they do it. And in some countries, they're strict. Some countries, less strict. And oh, okay. Yeah, when I went to Dubai, there was pretty much all the shops were open and everything was still working, except but though you got to wear masks. And in Brazil, too, it's kind of open still. Mm. What's Dubai like? Is that one just insane? It looks so crazy to me. I've never been there, but I always see imagery of it. It just looks like next level it's the richest country in the world right i don't know about that but yeah it definitely looks like in the videos and photos there's like just this was my second time and there's just twice as many skyscrapers than there was uh like eight years ago so they just keep building and building and building and uh-huh. every i guess people get kick you out if you try to skate spots you get kicked out and when i went there 10 like eight years ago then there was no skate parks. There was this one bowl that this American guy went there and kind of built it for this princess. So I went there and skated this bowl. Uh huh. And there was no other skate parks. And now I went there last month and there's like 20 skate parks. So Damn. the scene is growing, but there's not very many like super good local skaters. There are local skaters and, and they were complaining to me that no pros ever come. So. So it's worth to check it out, you know. Mm-hmm. Bars, you can go in a bar and drink a beer there. It's fine. It's fine. There are beer drinking and stuff, but it's harder to buy it to drink at the hotel. But it's possible. Everything's possible. And instead of smoking the herb, you smoke this tobacco thing, hmm. which is uh, you put a little bit of tobacco in a pipe, light it up, and you have one puff, and it's like a whole cigarette. So you get instantly, you got to hold on to something and be like. It's like a bong rip with nicotine? Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm chilling on that one. Damn. The local Red Bull guys really took care of me. They took me riding motorcycles. They took me on the tallest building on earth. 
went to do cryotherapy, which is like super cold, like air where you go. Oh, in. yeah. I want to try that. Yeah, it's all right. It's all right. It's, it's harder to go in an ice bath. Fuck. All right. Here's a tough question. Ready? The best thing you ever saw on a skateboard. Oh, I, I saw Milton Martinez do this one ollie in Peru. That was the biggest ollie that I have ever seen. It's like 10 feet forward and then probably like 20 feet up. And he just did this thing first go and it just blew my mind. Mm. Yeah, I seen like in Mystic Cup, I seen some crazy guy do this drop in Mystic Cup in Prague. This Brazilian guy was doing tail drop going down vertically like for probably also like 12 or 10 feet just vertical straight into a bank. <laughs> and then it was boom, it falls on his face on the flat. No way. And then last week, I was together with Felipe Nunes, and he's skating without any legs down some handrails. Oh, so, yeah. You skated with him? Yeah, yeah. I saw him nose grinding this one long rail, but it's also probably like 12 feet. Fuck, that's so gnarly, he huh? He broke his board with his ass because that's how much impact it was. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. He did the mega, right? Did he do bobs or no? Did the mega. Yeah. I don't know if it was Bob's or Woodward or whatever, but uh -huh. I think he, Mega, he did the loop. Oh, yeah, he did do the loop. Fuck. In, in one week that he went to California to stay with Tony Hawk, he filmed the whole, oh, he shot a whole Thrasher interview and he got the cover of Thrasher and then he went to X Games and got a second place at X Games. So Fuck. all in one week with broken hand and he skates with his hands. Yeah. That's amazing. Are you going to partake in the Olympics? No. I would have to like participate in a national contest, which I don't know if they're ever going to make one. And then I have to go to some international contests and participate and get some points in order to go to Olympics. Uh -huh. So when they asked me if I would like to do it. I kind of said no. But now I'm thinking about it. I'm like, yeah, might as well try maybe. Uh, it's, uh, is it going to be this year or next year? I think it should be this year. Oh, wow. There's some in Brazil, like this next weekend, I think there's a contest where they're going to judge. Mm -hmm. It's all no spectators. Everybody has to do the PCR test in order to skate. And All right. Well, anything you want to say, shout outs to people or list your sponsors or any of that kind of stuff? No, just shout outs to you for uh, doing this interview with me. It's good to see you. Yeah, you. dude. And uh, yeah, definitely shout out. I already shouted out all my sponsors and yeah, thank you to everybody. Thank you to all the skaters out there who skate and watch my videos. And I guess I should shout out the Skate Tales is that Red Bull show that I'm working on right now. Okay. Skate Tales. And last year we did six episodes and this year we're going to do six again, perhaps, or maybe even one every month. I'll put a link in the description. Yeah, thank you so much. And yeah, uh, dude. And then I also maybe want to ask you, how are you doing? Tell me about yourself. How is uh, San Francisco? And it's been faster. You, you see Cole every now and then. Yeah, I just saw Cole yesterday. Um, I'm not going to the work though. Uh, I'm working from home, so I, I did go to work yesterday. I've been going there, not even once a month. Like I think I've gone there like four times since March, just to like get mail or check in or like, you know, me and Cole and Tony, maybe we have a little meeting or whatever, but <clears throat> it's been, you know, it's just been crazy. It's been like uh, in San Francisco, if you're not wearing a mask, people will definitely look at you like, fuck you, like, you know, give you a bad vibe. Like everyone's taking it really serious here. And uh, it has been cool because for skating, just because like a lot of spots are like, that you yeah. won't be able to skate, you can skate now. But people skating with masks on or no? Yes and no. Some people will wear the mask and then when they skate, drop it down, you know, like yeah. they feel like they're not. Some people are skating with the mask. Some people are just like, there's a lot of people I think that don't think this is real. They think it's like conspiracy or, or whatever. And so there's some people like that. It's just all different things. Um, 
but I'm not trying to go to places where there's a lot of people. I went to one, uh, I actually went to the vert thing down in San Diego that Navarrete does the rumble and Ramona. Wes mm -hmm. was there. It was cool to see him, but, uh, it kind of freaked me out. Like in my head, I'm a little like, this isn't right. We shouldn't be around like this many people, especially that aren't wearing masks. So it's been kind of like that. And then San Francisco has had another shutdown where the restaurants and everything. At first they were closed. Then they opened for takeout only. And then they slowly started to like have like one or two or three tables or if they had patio serving. But mm. now they've closed it all down again to only takeout. Damn. Okay. So, yeah. Cause I, yeah. But, and then you said in Long Beach, if the place is serving food, then you can kind of chill there and have a beer. Oh, but, if, but all the bars, I guess, are closed anyways. Yeah, it just makes everything like hard to plan anything. Like, what are we going to do in July? I don't know. It depends how everything is, right? Like, it's it's kind of hard to make long term plans. Yeah, well, what I can say is that everything is still possible to do. At least for me, it's been possible. Like. Mm -hmm. We decided to travel like I went to Madrid and Madrid is like one of the craziest places with Corona. And uh -huh. we went there, we stayed away from the crowd, stayed a little bit outside of the city and we would go skate every day and it was possible. Ah. Then we went to just now ah. went to Brazil and we had to do those PCR tests in order to go. OK, did the test. We went and then before coming back, we also had to do the test and we uh, came up the nose. Oh yeah, like this much thing, like <laughs> dude. I've had it three times. Yeah, I did it as well four times. Uh -huh. um, it's possible, you know. It's possible to go and do these trips and mm. go skate, but you just gotta really want it, I guess. You just do what we gotta do. We just gotta keep fucking. I mean, Thrasher's stoked. Like the magazine is getting. Tons of photos. We still have yeah. like lots of videos and everything seems like skateboarding is just thriving. Like all the skate shops I talk to, they're like, this is one of the best years we've had. We've sold so many skateboards that yeah. the, the hard goods are selling like crazy. And then yeah. uh, me and my fiance are just planning to get married like in August. So I've been doing that. <laughs> Are you going to do it on Zoom? <laughs> yeah, I'm just yeah. Kidding. we're going to have a... No, we're going to do um the boy in the bubble wedding where everyone has to get in the bubble and uh -huh. they just like show up like... <laughs> that would be funny. <laughs> I, I want to do that so bad, but no, we're just going to do a, a intimate one like close or mm -hmm. family and close friends. I think it's going to be around 20 or 24 people and just yeah. have a nice place. Um the good news is like we got like way better rates because not too many people are doing it and they, you know, so that's good. We're getting to kind of do it at a place we maybe couldn't do um, normally. But the bad is that, of course, we can't have like all our friends um, that we want to have there, you know. There's going to be so much partying after this thing is over. <laughs> oh, man. The, yeah. I mean, <sighs> I want to invest in some beer companies, you know, like get stocks in like vodka, beer, whiskey, the, the major ones. <laughs> this is going to be like, <laughs> it's going to be insane. Well, shit, dude, thank you for taking the time out. Good to thank see you. your face. Um, hopefully you'll be in San Francisco or our paths will cross. Um, That's the plan. That one time, uh, I'll always remember fucking you guys came uh element trip i think you were going to idaho or something but you stopped in sf for a few days and you and evan skating fort miley and evan had the back 180 nose grind like we oh, yeah. skated the um over the rail to that long downhill thing with grayson mm -hmm. yeah uh that was a good that was a good time yeah that was probably last time i went to sf Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, then you're due back, man. Anytime, hit me up. You know that. I will. I'm and trying remember, to remember eyes. Always keep the eyes. Live in the now, in case you forget. Exactly. <laughs> you got any music? You got a song you could share with us to play on the way out of here? 
so many songs. Yeah. Let me check. What do I have over here? Never open myself this way. Life is ours. <laughs> we live it our way. All these words I don't just say. And let's nothing let's, else matters. Let's go with the Lionel Richie Hello, because I love that song. Uh, okay, hell yeah. You know, uh, side note, I learned how to break dance by watching Lionel Richie all night long when he does the dolphin dive. I did it slow-mo to like learn how to like... And we were just learning it, like jump up, put your hands down and then let your body go. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, hello and goodbye. All right. Thanks, Good. dude. Stay safe and uh, stay in touch. You too. Take care. And I'll see you in a couple months probably because I'm coming. Okay. Awesome. Good to hear. All right. Take care. Take care, Maris. Thank you. Thank you for listening to another episode of Talking Schmidt. You can subscribe to the show on iTunes, Anchor, Spotify, or anywhere you get your podcasts. When you subscribe, you'll get notifications every Tuesday of new episodes the minute they become available. Also, please leave reviews and a five-star rating. It's the best way to help the show grow. All of the episodes will always remain free, but if you would like to help support the show, you can do so at TalkingSchmidt.com, where you can pick up some merchandise like t-shirts, beanies, hats, and stickers. The website has an entire archive of all of the episodes with extra photos and videos. Email us with any suggestions, comments, or ways that the show may have improved your life at talkingschmidt at gmail.com. All interviews are conducted, edited, and produced by Schmitty. The intro music is Mary's Cross by the band Nature. Very special shout out goes to the executive director, Cheryl Camisa. Shout out. Love it! This is Talking Schmidt where the Rolodex is deep, but the conversation is deeper.